Hi guys, um, I thought I'd give you a demonstration um, with my new toy, the Motomo TV3, um, just to show you why I'm so excited about it. Because um, in regards to time lapses, um, this gives me precise control over where the camera will start, where it will pan and tilt to, um, up to three points. Um, previously I've tried doing panning time lapses using a motorized telescope head or mount um, but the problem with that is is that I can I'm limited by what I can do with that in the sense that I can have it tracking a star for example and as you know stars will rotate in an arc through the sky and what this means obviously is that if my camera is using the telescope mount it's going to be moving in the same arc as it pans instead of like panning in an angle straight across it'll be doing an arc-wise fashion which meant that I never actually knew I'll be guessing where it would actually end up at the end of the time lapse so sometimes I might have wanted it to sort of focus on a tree but instead it's up in the sky um, so it's a little bit ad hoc using that method so what I love about the TB3 is that it gives me that precise control um, but basically you use a wireless remote I'm going to use the remote to cycle through the menus and I'm going to use a three point move um, so it's, it comes with a two point move where you can set a start and an end so it will start here and then end up here or wherever you want it to be um, but in this case I'm using a three point move um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it on the statue above that grave there and then pan across to the chair and then I have it swing back across the um, cemetery. So first up we need to set the, um, I need to select three point move. So I select that. And then what I do is I'll, I'll use the remote and I'll rotate, I'll move the camera until I've got it framed on the statue. I just checked that I've done that. Okay, once I'm once I'm happy with that, set it. And then now I'm gonna move the frame the chair. Once I'm happy with that, set that. Now I've got to do the final point, which is all the way across the side. So you can, so you can sort of see how easy it is just to control it and set your, your points. Okay, so I've set that. Now it's asking me to set intervals. Um, what I need to keep in mind when with, with any time maps is that you need to note or take note of how long it takes to take the photo, whether it's one second or five second exposure, then also the amount of time it takes to write to the memory card. Um, so in this sense, instance, it's roughly one second to take the photo, and then four seconds to write to the, the memory card. So it's five seconds all up. So I set the parameter for intervals to five seconds. So that's gonna be how much time it'll wait before it moves. So I'll take a photo five seconds, writes to the card, then move, and then takes the photo, right to the card, move, and then just repeats that process. Now we just need to set how many frames. Um, so normally with like a 20 second time lapse, or time lapse video, it's 25 frames per second, so that's about 500 frames. Uh, I'll probably go for 30 seconds because we're doing such a, such a large range of movement. So that'll be about 750 frames. So again, I use the controller, adjust that, until I get the amount of frames and it also tells me how much time it's going to take to do the whole thing which is a good idea normally I'd have to try and calculate it on a calculator um, so I set that static time is basically how long the camera will, will take after the interval before it starts moving um, so it's usually 0.2 seconds less than 5 so in this case it's 4.8 so I set that 
Now it's asking me to set the ramp. Some of you may be wondering what the hell I'm on about when I say ramp speed. Basically what it means is it's the speed or the range of frames it takes up to speed up from a stop. So for example, so say, say 50 frames, that's which is two seconds. From for the first two seconds it'll start off slow from the stop motion, it'll start off slow, or from start, sorry, it'll start off slow, and then build up to normal speed. So ramping is basically slow to fast. So that's what ramping is. So instead of just doing a linear motion, it's actually slowing them. You get what I mean. So I'll set that. And now it's going to the start. So I've set all my parameters. It's now going to ask me to review the settings. So it tells me what settings I've already selected and do I need to change it. Then when I'm happy with it, I'll just let it go. And here it's telling me how many volts is left in the battery, um, how many frames of how many frames I've taken out of the total amount, which is 752. It's going through from a start point to my second point to my third point. So that's the beauty of this device in respect to what I'm doing. Like I've said before, is that it allows me to know precisely where the camera will be, not only at the beginning, but throughout the whole motion during the time lapse which is really critical when I'm doing star lapses or sorry star spins when I'm doing time lapses of the Milky Way moving across the sky for example because previously like I said using a telescope mount I know where I'm starting but I'm guessing where it's going to end up and sometimes I could be way off where I wanted to be so when a astro lapse or star spin takes four to five hours to capture it actually you, using this TV3, it actually makes sure that I get exactly what I want. So I haven't wasted four or five hours guessing where it could end up like I had previously. So that's why I'm so excited about it. Now my next step is once I get used to using this, is connecting it to my stage zero dolly. So then I can also have movement as well as panning movement. So yeah, so I'm excited. So anyway, that's what it's all about.